why when we pray do we end it by saying in Jesus name amen is it routine or is there something more to it let's talk about that specifically here today on midweek at the compass Hey everybody, my name is Jake. Great to be together here with you again today. We're walking through questions that you specifically have asked. You know, during our weekend services a couple of series ago, we had this open forum for you, specifically asking what questions do you have about scripture? We wanted to be able to try and answer some of those and that's what we're doing here today. You know, we've already walked through a couple of questions like, can you be a Christian and believe in evolution? And then last time we were together, we talked about how do dinosaurs fit into the biblical narrative? And a question came in that you all asked specifically about prayer. And the question was, when we pray, why do we end it by saying, in Jesus' name, amen? You know, a lot of us might think it's just a routine. So I was a tennis player in college. I played D3, so it's not really all that exciting. But I got into a really steady routine. Before matches, I would do the same stretches, the same warm-ups. I would drink the same Gatorade. I would go through the same exercises, the same warm-up routine before every single match. Why? Well, I'd love to tell you like it was kinesiology-based, but really, I just found a habit and a routine, and I stuck with it. Maybe it's a little OCD when it comes to the fact that there was always a yellow and an orange Gatorade plus my water bottle. Leave those things alone, please. (laughs) But ultimately, I just got into a routine. It worked for me. It allowed me to perform at a high level. It allowed me to feel like I could compete. So I just stuck to it. You know, a lot of our times, our prayer life might feel the same way, that we do it because it's routine. So when you ask a question like that of, why do we end a prayer by saying, in Jesus' name, amen? I feel like a lot of us probably do it because it just feels like the routine thing that we've seen or have been taught or have been shown or modeled, and we've just stuck with it. But I wanna look to scripture. Let's answer that question in particular first here. Why, when we pray, do we say in Jesus' name, amen? And the answer can actually come out of John chapter 14 in verses 13 and 14. And reading it from the NIV, it says, And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Those words are spoken directly by Jesus, and he's saying, When you ask things in my name, I will present them to the Father. In this case, the Father being God. You know, we see this really clear picture here. Jesus is directly saying, when you pray, do it in my name. So the very short answer is, why do we say in Jesus' name? It's because Jesus tells us to write out a scripture there. And when we say the word amen, really all we're saying is, so be it. I agree. So when you tie it all together, you're saying, I'm asking this in the name of Jesus because Jesus is going to present this to God on my behalf. God, I agree with it. May this be the case. So be it. Amen. But it also made me think a little bit more. Maybe there's something behind this question that we could also address as well. Because I think there is something more to it. And that really goes down to the functionality of prayer. You know, it might be a little bit confusing at times if you're new to church or you're still just processing the Christian faith. And you see things like there's God the Father and Son and Holy Spirit. And you might be thinking, well, if I pray in Jesus' name, like, who do I pray to? Am I praying to Jesus and then saying in his name, amen? Or am I praying to God? Or am I looking to the Holy Spirit? So if you're new here, I just want to let you know there's this concept called the Trinity. And I don't want to spoil too much of it here because we are going to talk about that next week. But we can see a picture of the Trinity in Jesus' baptism found in the story in Matthew chapter 3. And basically, Jesus is being baptized. Again, if you don't know what that is, have a conversation with me. Go to thecompass.net slash compass online. Click the digital coffee button. That's just going to notify me that you want to have a conversation. I'll set up a 30-minute Zoom call to chat about baptism or, quite frankly, anything you want to talk about. It could be about the faith. It could be about the Compass Church. It could be about my tennis career. It doesn't really matter. I just want to meet and connect with you. Now, with all of that said, 
At Jesus' baptism, we see this picture of Jesus coming up out of the water. And there is a voice coming from heaven saying that this is my son and I am well pleased with him. It's the voice of God speaking. And at the same time, we see a dove descend from heaven. And scripture tells us there that it's the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus like a dove. So we get this picture of all three ends of the Trinity in one picture. So if there are three persons in the Trinity, I want to give you a tip for knowing who to pray to. Now, I don't want this to be a blanket statement or a rule that you hold to at all times, because we're going to see each person in the Trinity has a different role in how we live out our faith. But by and large, what I want to encourage you when you pray and who you're praying to, remember these three prepositions, to, through, and by. All right, preposition number one. Who do we pray to? We pray to God the Father. Why would I say that? Well, again, let's look to the words of Jesus. He says specifically to pray to God. Where do we see that? We see it in this prayer that is really famous from Jesus called the Lord's Prayer. And the first words that he says during that prayer are, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You can look at a different translation of it, but it's all the same general gist. Jesus is saying that, hey, I want to teach you how to pray. And when you pray, kind of model it in this way. Start out by praying to God. You know, Jesus in the gospel accounts, somewhere around 165 times, models talking to the Father. It's no accident. If Jesus is telling us how to pray in this particular passage, and over the course of these four Gospels, the story of Jesus' life, he said or modeled or shown about 165 times to pray to the Father. I think he wants us to know that by and large, we are praying to God. Preposition number two, through. We pray through Jesus. What in the world does that even mean? All right. I want to say kind of two things about praying through Jesus. What I mean by that is Jesus is our mediator. Or let's put it another way. Jesus is the go-between between between us and God. Where do we see that? Well, I want to go back to John chapter 14, but I want to look a couple of verses earlier. In verse 6, it says, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We have a mediator. We have a go-between. Jesus is saying, if you want to have access to God the Father, you do that through me. 1 Timothy chapter 2 puts it in another way. It says that, for there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Jesus Christ. We can access God the Father through Jesus. We have no right on our own to do that. We are not good enough. There is nothing about me that is good enough to just go talk to God on my own. Why? Because I've broken God's rules. Man, I'm a sinner that have been saved by grace. The reason I can say that I am saved is because of the person and the work of Jesus. And the second thing that I want to say about Jesus being a mediator is he is in constant communication with God. Now, you might be thinking, where do we see that? Well, there are a lot of passages that talk about this. You could go into some really heady conversations. Again, we'll get that direction next time we're together of how the Trinity is a community. But I want to talk about proximity for a moment. Jesus is our mediator, and he's in constant communion with God. Why? He's in communication with him because he is seated at God's right hand. He is right next to God. We see that in Romans chapter 8. I want to read that right now where it says, Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Not only that, there are four separate times in the book of Hebrews alone that says that Jesus is at the right hand of God. So if we want to be able to talk to God, we can do it because of who Jesus is and what he's done. But not only that, Jesus has a proximity to God. 
So when we pray through Jesus, what we're doing is saying that we have access to God because Jesus is there. He has done something on our behalf to allow us to access and request things of God. And we can do that in Jesus' name. The third preposition I want you to remember is by. We pray to God through Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 6.18 tells us to pray continually in the Spirit. Now that might not mean a whole lot to you, so let me use some words out of Romans chapter 8 again that help us understand a little bit of how we pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. And in chapter 8, verse 26, it says, In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. We pray by the Holy Spirit's power because he speaks on our behalf. The times where we muddle through what we want to say, where we don't quite land the plane how we want to, newsflash, I'm there all the time with these midweek conversations. I go back and wonder, did I really say that? Did I actually say what I wanted to? But I trust that the Holy Spirit's power is at work. And the same thing happens when I pray. I trust his power is at work. And the words that I say may not be perfect, but what Jesus is going to hear through him and present to God is going to be made perfect. You know, we have the power of the Holy Spirit at work in our lives if you've trusted in Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, if you've trusted in Jesus as the forgiver of your sins. At that exact moment, the Holy Spirit indwells you and helps lead and guide and correct. And in this moment, he also helps us pray. So we pray to God through Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I said at the beginning, and I want to say one more time here and just give some specific examples. This is just a framework. It's not a hard and fast rule, right? Jesus gave himself for us on a cross. It wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to say, God, thank you for giving yourself on a cross. No, in those moments, it would be a moment of reflection to say, Jesus, we know what it cost you. It cost you your life for me to be in right standing with your dad. So thank you for that. And in the same manner, it's okay to pray to the Holy Spirit at times. The Holy Spirit leads, it also convicts. So there could be a time where it would be very appropriate to say, and Holy Spirit, show me areas in my life where I'm not living up to what I'm supposed to be living up to. Again, those are just really quick examples that you could be praying to somebody outside of the manner that we laid out. But by and large, by a rule, if you're just kind of generally sticking to praying to God through Jesus, or let's tie it back to that first question, in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, you are going to have a prayer life that is developing and growing. And my prayer is that it would be flourishing. So where do we end this? Well, I want to end it with a prayer. I think that's probably the best thing that we can do. But before I do that, I want to make sure to give a tease for where we're going next week. You've heard me talk about it. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You guys asked the question, why isn't the Trinity more explicitly explained in Scripture? I'm going to be joined by my friend Gerald next week where we're going to talk about that exact question to start answering some definitions of what the Trinity is and then where we see it outlined and just some examples where we can come to see it in past and maybe get a little additional clarity on what it is and what it looks like and what it means. Now with that, I would love to take a moment to pray for you. Let me know if there's a specific way that I could pray for you, but just generally let me do that now. God, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Great is your faithfulness towards us. God, we know that we have no ability to come to you on our own, but because of who Jesus is and the sacrifice he's made, we know we have that ability and opportunity. So God, we don't take it lightly to have the opportunity to communicate with you, but we just truly want to say thank you. And Holy Spirit, continue to convict us in the areas where we fall short because we don't want to stay where we are. Every one of us wants to grow as a person, 
My prayer is everyone who is joining us here today wants to grow in their faith story and faith journey as well. We know that that's not possible without the person and the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So God, we love you. We thank you for the cost of Jesus, all for us to be in right standing with you. And we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit that you have given us. May we never take any end of that lightly. We love you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for sticking around this time. Looking forward to continuing to answer these theology questions next week here on Midweek at the Compass.